a sturdy boat and the sea. Lobster traps, calloused hands, proud men and good. The Maritimes. For many Maritimers, life is tied to the sea and to hard work. Hard work has built the Maritimes. Hard work has also built the Christian training center of Tatamagush, Nova Scotia. This center started in 1957 in an old farmhouse. Much has happened since then. Canada's industrial heart is still centered in southern Ontario. Mills, warehouses, plants, factories. Here are all the complexities of industry and all the complexities of life. And also located in southern Ontario, on the edge of the valley of the Grand River, is the Christian training center of Five Oaks. The heart of Five Oaks is the house of the interpreter. Five Oaks has been in the interpreting business since 1951. The good earth. Out on the prairies, we Canadians have certainly inherited the earth and all that it can mean. Years of abundance, drought and failure, sandstorms, blizzards, the glory of a prairie spring, and oil, liquid energy, refineries, towns, cities, people, neighbors from many nations. And a part of all this, snuggled into Saskatchewan's Capel Valley, is the Prairie Christian Training Center. In 1951, the original center opened its doors to an eager enrollment of two persons. Since then, many thousands have participated in activities at Fort Capel. Magnificent views, scenery without end. Nature's camouflage for the bustling, thriving West Coast. But behind the scenery, as everywhere, there are people. And there is the Christian training center of Naramata. Naramata was founded in 1947 in what the BC Indians called the Valley of the Smile of Manitou. Since then, parents, children, single adults, and youth have all been exploring the wonders of Naramata Fellowship. And presumably, Manitou is still smiling. Perhaps that will do as an introductory rundown on the four centers, but what are they? We've been calling them Christian training centers, and yet one really calls itself a Christian leadership training school and another refers to itself as a Christian workers' center. Leaders, workers, center, school, about the only name all four places have in common seems to be Christian. So instead of trying to decide immediately what these centers are, let's consider why people attend them. In preparing this program, we talked with a great many people. You've already heard comments from some of them. Among other questions, I asked, what attracted them to a center in the first place? Well, I already was employed in the church in Sunday school work and midweek work, but I felt I could improve on what I was doing there, and I did think that the place could give me some help uh, as an individual. It was through friends that uh, were encouraging us to go, and we uh, didn't particularly feel a need a uh, personal need to go to a training center. I had heard that there was a place where I could go to learn all about planning YPU programs, and this is what I wanted. I first heard of the center through a friend of a friend. We were debating at the time where we were going to go on holidays, and I suppose it was a suggestion. Well, for one thing, uh, 
I was looking for something uh, that might help uh, our group at our own church, the Coe group. I was looking for some place where I might get some of the answers that were puzzling me. Um, what kind of answers, Mrs. Brutt? Well, as a youngster, I grew up in a family where you attended church and Sunday school regularly. My father was a Sunday school superintendent, and it was the thing to do. My oldest brother died when I was 16. This came as quite a shock. I couldn't quite understand why this should happen in a family like ours. And then later on, after I married, my husband was killed. We'd had only 13 days together, and again, I couldn't understand why God would let this sort of thing happen to me. <laughs> I felt I didn't deserve it, and yet I, I realized that I'm not any individual that would be given any special consideration. But uh, it left me a pretty bitter girl. When I asked Gerd Unterman, a new Canadian, why he attended the center, he began with a frank statement concerning his first reactions to Canada and Canadians. Aside from the general objection to a foreigner, I found something that frightened me far more, and that was the apparent emptiness of relationships among the people that lived here. Uh, their, their core relations were very, very superficial to my point of view. And I, I, I couldn't stand the country like this. It, it didn't make sense. So I wanted to see whether there was more to it or whether this was all. Everyone seemed to have specific reasons for attending a center. But were they the only reasons? I felt that people gave a good many reasons and quite often excuses for why they came. They were being quite honest with themselves and thinking they came to maybe be a better Sunday school teacher or do a better job of helping in their church, but basically it was help for themselves they were looking for. You will have noticed that a few said they went for the courses, for training. But whoever went to a school because they were bitter or on holiday or because they couldn't stand the country. It's true, you take courses at the center, but you can fish if you prefer. You graduate, but you don't necessarily write exams. Programs last anywhere from a weekend to six months. If you could drop in at any of the various centers any time, one thing for certain, you would find activity and lots of it. Children at play are a sure sign a family week is in progress. There is always work involved, but here it never seems like work. A class in session could be discussing the life of Paul or how to get along with the boss. Croquet is not necessarily on the curriculum. but good fellowship is. Even a seemingly formal class can turn into an intimate group discussion. Once a discussion gets going, no telling where it will end. Energetic discussion, however, is no deterrent to fellowship.
seek to hear us, O Lord. Thou knowest our local congregations and their needs. Help us to do our part. Visit them. Clarify their witness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We beseech thee to hear us, O Lord. Amen. But perhaps the most important activity is simply the opportunity to be alone. One could continue looking at activities that show folk doing everything from washing dishes to conducting chapel. And it would be difficult to detect any overall pattern. Each center has evolved in its own way. And yet there is an overall pattern to center activities. It started coming out during the interviews when I asked our friends about their first impressions of the centers. The feeling that you're away from the, the hectic city, the, the, uh, all the pressures of the, of the everyday world, and uh, you're free in this setting to, to talk very relaxed about practically anything you would want to. What amazed me most was that we got to know each other so fast. Why, we knew a lot, I knew a lot of people on Friday night, and by Saturday I felt as if I knew everybody to certainly say hello and sit down and speak to them. Well, after being there on a winter weekend, we took our children as well and went to family camp in August and joined with about a dozen other families for the full week. And uh, this was really an experience as far as we were concerned, getting our family into an environment like this, away from the ordinary hustle and bustle and all the things that go on at home. and. Uh, to get them into a little quieter attitude, but yet where we were doing things together as a family, instead of each one off helter-skelter, uh, this was really something. Well, another thing that uh, impressed me at both the center was the uh, new method of teaching that they had up there. Most of us, I guess, at that time, were just used to having the teachers standing up at the front of the classroom and uh, hammering all the information into us, but uh, here we were in a group discussion uh, teaching ourselves more or less with the experienced leader uh, helping us. And Instead of being lectured at for let's say 45 minutes, the students were given the chance almost to lecture the teacher. Uh, our views would be listened to, our ideas would be gathered and we could share them. And we would more or less end up teaching ourselves with the guidance of our teacher of course. He soon found that you were you were leading, and the things that you had to say were things that other people were willing to listen to. To the people I had talked to, this technique of group discussion seemed pretty important. Then I asked Gerd Unterman what he thought of it. Confusion. <laughs> Utter confusion. Uh, the, the principal uh, retreated constantly from what I thought was his job to tell, you know, if students got into an argument, I expected him to say, no, look, that's it. He didn't. <laughs> he just uh, said, well, maybe, maybe not. And I uh, interpreted this as weakness. Uh, it took me a long time to realize it takes a lot of strength not to say something. <laughs> and uh, so I gradually I saw that behind the apparent confusion, behind the apparent non-existent of authority, there was a deeper authority for people that were willing and able to find it. So much for the teaching methods, but how about the people being taught, the students? They all varied widely in experience, age, and education. How did this mixture of people get along? There were no social barriers whatsoever at the center. The, you were free to say anything about anything you wanted to. But I was amazed inasmuch as a person like myself from a factory floor could learn in the same room as an ex-college student, a nurse, a school teacher. Uh, I was in with these people 
We were all at various grades of education, and yet at the same time, we learned things. Georgina Langridge went to the center with a friend. This was fortunate. Georgina was so afraid of people that had it not been for the friend, she might have stayed in the taxi and gone home. Such a deep fear of people had not been mentioned by the others, so I was determined to get at the background. I think perhaps I felt the whole world was against me, that nothing I did ever turned out right. And I was never really happy in the job I was doing. And, well, it took some time to realize that uh, people were all pretty much the same. Everyone had their problems in one way or another. Mine weren't unique and by any means. And that there were people who were actually afraid of me more than I was of them. And it wasn't the people themselves I was afraid of, it was myself. Afraid of oneself. Quite a discovery. Perhaps here was a clue to what the centers really accomplish. I think a good many people have a mistaken impression. We speak of the center and what it's doing, but of itself it's nothing, it's just an empty building. There's a staff and you have the impression it's the staff that's doing this thing. But it isn't the building or the people, but it's the power of God working through this place and through these people. But the total effect of the learning process was that God was there, and that it didn't matter whether we were at the center or whether we were at home or anywhere at church where there was a constructive atmosphere for learning what God's will is for us. I mentioned earlier that the centers were highly individualistic places, but with a core of similarity. The similarity now appeared to be partly in the teaching methods, partly in the attitude of the leaders, and partly in the atmosphere. But as I continued to talk with each person, something even more important emerged. The question I asked was, what impressed you most about the center? Well, I think it was um, getting to know the people and getting to know them so very, very well. All the people, not uh, just the staff, but, but everybody together. This. I think was uh, was one of the things which impressed me most, the relaxed manner of everybody, the, the basic beliefs that, that everybody had. I'd say learning to live with people in, a, in the fellowship there was an experience that I've never, I've never been subjected to before. It doesn't seem to be significant whether the person next to you is well accomplished academically, economically, socially, or not, it means most that he has this Christianity. Those are just some of the comments of some of the people I talked to. They didn't all attend for the same reasons. They didn't all take part in the same types of programs nor attend the same center. But they credited the effect of their experience to the same cause, the fellowship of people. Each center seems to achieve the atmosphere of a small Christian island floating in time. Onto that island come people like us, bringing their problems, fears, and aspirations. The value of a center apparently springs from within this group of temporary visitors. Each individual seems to achieve a release of his personality, a discovery of hidden ability, a deeper awareness of himself, of others, and of God. But the experience on this island in time must come to an end. Each person must leave. Each person must return to the home, the desk, the school, the hospital, the laboratory, the factory. When they leave this community, what then? What benefits does one take away from a training center? It seems.
And that in the fall, when I got back to teaching Sunday school and and uh, being a YPU member, that I discovered that I was using countless number of things that uh, we had used at the training center. One of the uh, first benefits that I think that I got from the center was uh, something that I was able to take back to our own group in the, in, at our own church, and that was uh, this technique of group discussions that I learned up at the center. The center opened up a whole new world for me. Prior to attending the center, I had no formal training for any profession. About the time that our course ended, I was contacted by a clergyman in our home community who was aware of a need for a social worker with their local children's aid. He asked if I would be interested and said he felt that I could do the job if I would consider it. So you took the job and found that you liked it? That's right. The training in the center made it much easier for me to meet people and to see their needs, to help them work out some of their problems. Many of them problems I'd worked out for myself previous to this. And we had been taught to go home and fit into our communities and give leadership. This was one place where I felt that I could do it. Well, let me tell you about my first day back at work. Because my car wouldn't start too well, I arrived late, which made things a little embarrassing. And in my absence, two rumors had sprung up. One was that I was going to take my flight engineer's papers, and the other was that I had run off to join the ministry, and the fellows wanted to know which I had succeeded in. So in the ribbon that I was taking as to how I got on, I realized that here was really the test of the whole thing that I had learned at the school. I could either just laugh it off and told them I'd taken a month off and had a whale of a time, or I could tell them really what I had been doing. So I made something of a stand. I told them I had been to a, a Christian lay training school to learn a little more about my faith and how I could use it. And during this, the attitude of the fellows changed. I learned that uh, he was a Presbyterian and he was an Anglican and another fellow was a Baptist uh, until I realized that amongst these fellows, this bunch of fellows who I thought had no relation to the church at all, at all uh, was the church itself. We found that after family camp that we uh, very readily could continue family worship and this was so helpful to uh, learn how to live together more cooperatively and uh, to actually apply Christianity. Our experience at the center led me to have a little more self-confidence that I was able to accept a task in the local church that I would never have ventured into before and then since by attending other uh, courses and weekends I've been able to add to my experience and do a much better job in it. But this has all come about I think through a uh, better understanding between ourselves and our family and our allotment of time of uh, what we now consider as important in our day-to-day -day living because of the experience there and finding that I had a little more mental capacity and ability than I had ever given myself credit for. I decided it was about time I started using some of it. And this year I complete my three years training and will graduate as a, I hope, a registered nurse, and well, before the experience at the center, it wasn't even a dream, let alone a possibility. Georgina, is your experience at the center helping with your nursing so far as your patients are concerned? Good many people stop and think what comes after this life for the first time. I think they need to talk about it. The only way to, to relieve it is to encourage them to talk about it. And you can't just expect them to tell you all their troubles. But I find that if they 
if your relationship is close enough to God that something of him reaches through you to the people and answers something of their need. One final question occurred to me. I had been told that it cost very little to attend a center. I wondered how this was possible. Where the money comes from, all of it, I don't know. But there are channels which are obvious, one of which is the contribution coming from congregations in the church of people that help with money. And I also know that others, sometimes not even connected with the church itself, contribute material and food and even building sites. Because of this, people like I could attend. During this conversation with Gerd, I used the phrase, a good cause. There are so many good causes today that I got gradually sick of them. To number the center in their work among them is to be resented because they're the basic realities of human existence are touched and the intangible contents of men are being challenged. This is not a good cause, this is the cause. So if people are approached to consider contribution to this work, I think they should ignore the, forgive me, nonsense of much of the business-like approach, uh, the efficient verbal drum of this being good for that or that or the other thing. This isn't good in particular to anything. It is necessary to man's existence, period. This has been an introduction to the United Church of Canada's four Christian training centers. At Naramata, British Columbia, Tatamagouche, Nova Scotia, Capel, Saskatchewan, and Five Oaks, Ontario. <laughs>